Um, bonjour. I would like to thank uh, the coordination of this meeting for inviting me. Um, well, I, I know that I would present here just a few days ago, so I focus my presentation on the disease that I am working with uh, in Brazil and just very rapid uh, uh, slides about this. No? So uh, the et etiology of fever in Brazil is a range of virus and bacteria everywhere. Uh, but the access to clinical and treatment services in our public health um, <coughs> clinics is nationally. We have in all our 5,500 municipalities in Brazil, we have public health um, units there, but the variation in what the services are able to offer to the population is absolutely huge. Some are very good, very well organized, and some are just basic one to give vaccines and the vaccine room is not so good, et cetera. So the variation in quality, uh, what is offered to the population across the country uh, is, is very, very, very big. We do not have a fever program at the Minister of Health. The programs at the Minister of Health are based on uh, uh, are syndromic or based in, the t in some uh, uh, disease. And, but we have a strong immunization services uh, in Brazil. Um, we are very well recognized by our immunization program in Brazil. And unfortunately, in recent years, the number of vaccine coverage is decreasing across the country as it's happened in other uh, countries uh, elsewhere. So some spe spe specific issues for Brazil is that we have malaria in north uh, of, of Brazil and the arbovirus across the country. Uh, dengue, chikungunya, Zika, Maiaro viruses, West Nile probably, not recognized in humans but detected in horses until now. And, um, and the outbreaks can vary year by year according to different regions uh, in the country. So in this presentation, I will talk a little bit about uh, acute respiratory infections, our program and rash fever, uh, measles mainly, and some ongoing studies with potential uh, interest for future collaboration. So about acute respiratory infections. So we have a, a influenza program, so this data are based on um, the, defi the suspected definition uh, uh, clinical case for uh, influenza. So we can see that from last year, for example, uh, from the 28 clinical uh, samples collected throughout the country in Sentinel's hospitals, 23% uh, were uh, uh, severe acute respiratory infection caused by influenza and 22 by other um, respiratory virus, but we have a large number that is in gray that we do not know. We are not testing for bacteria. We are testing for other respiratory viruses, not for bacteria. So we still do not know what is going on. And for all these patients, uh, there is, is available um, the, uh, the Tamiflu, the Ozotamivir, but it's not given all the time because the clinicians are, have some doubts if give or not, or if they wait or not the results of the laboratory. So although we can offer by, through the Minister of Health uh, treatment for uh, influenza suspected case, and although there is guidelines say, oh, now there is influenza in this part of Brazil, even so the treatment is not uh, the, the doctors do not give naturally to the patient because they understand and know how to give the treatment varies from doctors from doctors, no? So uh, how to train in the public services, how to train in the hospital to the correct management of the patient is always a big challenge uh, in, in our country. When we go to the rash disease, uh, we had a very successful program for measles elimination in the Americas. So the Americas, together with Brazil, 
received in 2016 the certification of measles elimination. And 2017, he started a measles outbreak in Venezuela. And now, due to economic and social problems in Venezuela, Brazil is receiving, since uh, one and a half year around it, uh, uh, around 1,000 people by day is coming to Brazil for, from the Amazon region, from north of Brazil. Uh, and so we are having, and as Venezuela is having measles uh, epidemic, we are having outbreaks in Brazil. Of course, our outbreaks, we are not uh, blame Venezuela for this. Our outbreak is our responsibility. It's because our coverage is not good, period. But, uh, so when we see uh, the, what I'm saying, uh, the, the Mislow's uh, surveillance in Brazil is case-based. So each case must be have a sample collection tested for IgM, PCR, etc. So uh, when we see one graphic of one state like that, it's clear that in this state, with only 575 cases, is more or less was more or less uh, easy to deal to test every sample. So we we see a normal curve where we can see the confirmed cases in red and the di discarded case in, <coughs> green, in green. So we can see a normal curve uh, where the, um, the laboratory works uh, pretty well. But if we go to Amazon states where they have more than uh, 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 11,000 cases, and there, there was no kits provided by the Minister of Health in the middle or in the beginning of this uh, epidemic. We can see that in November, there was a huge number of cases, more than 7,000 cases, that we were pending of classification. So they decided to confirm all as being measles. So probably part of this curve is not measles. And if we try to look at each form, the patient form data was absolutely poor in terms of clinical symptoms and signs. So one thing is a very nice study, another thing is the real life, isn't it? They are very different uh, things. So we, we know that probably here we had chikungunya, circulating and dengue in more or less in the same time. So that could interfere in, in some of uh, those results. So this is the normal life, isn't it? it? It's how it unfortunately works. So we need to have point of care tests, for example, to go to one school and to test two or three children and to know, okay, you have measles circulating here, so we can confirm the other ones by epidemiological link, for example. But we do not have this yet and uh, available, so what we have is this curve. <laughs> so, and uh, in terms of uh, uh, what we are working now is we have one um, study going on um, that the PI is Dr. Andrea Siqueira, and part of this study has been uh, um, with financial support from uh, FIND, and it's a study uh, that uh, started uh, um, last year, 2017, in, uh, in the Amazon region and in two uh, units, uh, one hospital and one health services uh, in, in Rio de Janeiro. Um, so, we, we are investigating the main causes of fever, like arbovirus, of course, malaria in the north uh, of Brazil. We do not have malaria in Rio yet. And, uh, and pneumonia and gastrointestinal, et cetera. So what we received in 2017 in the different age groups, we can see the fever with rush is a very high number. So, and uh, and most of the cases were due to chikungunya. And, uh, and also we had a uh, parvovirus uh, outbreak uh, during this period. So, 
and for the acute respiratory, um, we have uh, influenza, of course, and the RSV in mainly in children up to five years uh, of age. No, so. And uh, in another project we are working with is the respiratory syncytial virus. Um, as most of you know, there is a, a very um, uh, well. The WHO is, is starting a, a global RSV surveillance. Uh, nowadays, it is starting with 15 uh, countries, a pilot study, because um, we probably will have RSV vaccine on the horizon. I put next five years, because every time that I go to WHO, they say next five years, independent of the year. So I, I repeat the recommendation. And uh, so we have some vaccine, probably. And uh, we have many challenges on RSV. And one of the challenges is because about 50% of RSV cases in young ch children do not have fever. And if we do a surveillance of RSV without fever or with fever, we can interfere on the influenza surveillance, probably. So we have this pilot study to know how if it's we, we interfere, and of course WHO, nobody is interested in to decrease the influenza surveillance, isn't it? So. And uh, we are sure that when we have uh, the RSV vaccine, the impact in hospitals in emergency will be a huge uh, impact in terms of diminishing the number of, of children um, that ask for um, med medical attention. During our, uh, our annual RSV epidemic in Brazil, the picture, if you go to emergency, is similar to many other countries from 10 children that we collect samples, uh, children with dyspnea, for example, uh, around seven to eight uh, are RSV positive. So if you have a good vaccine, it will be very, very useful for that. No? So, um, so we, we have the recruitment of this patient uh, with fever, and also we work with the data bank. I didn't show you the slides, but uh, we, uh, we worked with 120,000 uh, cases from t three years that enter to the data bank of the Minister of Health, and we, we, we saw that we can have data, very nice data from RSV uh, with the influenza uh, suspicion case definition. So we can have uh, RSV, the, the data without interfere in, uh, in the influenza surveillance. That is something good. And another interesting and another real life importance is that in Brazil, at the Minister of Health, we have uh, different numbers of database that the people in the field, at the hospitals, at the health unit, they need to enter. And the data bank do not talk to each other. So when we did that study of 100,000 cases, what we saw is that two data banks uh, about 85% of the cases are the same. So if we put all together without separating the case, we will have a, a different picture, isn't it? So this is another challenge in public health. Sometimes so many data banks that are not talking to each other, and uh, we, when we pr the Minister of Health present data, we have d uh, a wrong picture of what's going on. So uh, to finalize some challenges, I put here just something. So it's necessary to have rapid test. Yes, there is one ongoing study for measles uh, developed by David Brown, uh, a point of care test that probably will be very useful. The training of health professionals is something that we can do it regularly all the time because this is a big challenge. And we need more study. We need to generate to, the, to, to guide public policies. So to whom we are working, the public health is working, to whom? And when to do some intervention and where to do those interventions. So we need to have a guideline. 
for us to know exactly what we are doing and to do with in a not in a cost effectiveness way. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs>